welcome to the channel. I'm back to break down this five game NBA DFS slate on DraftKings. Before we get into it, if you do enjoy the content at any point in this video, if you could please leave a like on this video, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell, that would be greatly appreciated. YouTube continues to tell me that about 70% of my audience is not subscribed. So if that's you and you enjoy this content, if you feel like I provide you with any value, if you feel like any of the statistics, the analysis, or any of the above is helpful, if you could take one second to do that, that would be great. And with that being said, let's go ahead and start breaking down this one today. First game on the slate, we got Detroit taking on Washington, 8 o'clock lock tonight. Uh, as far as the injuries are concerned, Diallo, Corey Joseph, and Bertans are listed as questionable. Not like huge news, but definitely some minutes that could free up in the rotation on the uh, Detroit side if there is no Diallo and Corey Joseph. And then as far as um, Davis Bertans is concerned, I wouldn't really think that impacts the Wizards rotation too, too much. Um, either, but as far as pace in this game, this game comes in with a 228 and a half over under five point spread in favor of the Washington Wizards. Uh, so expect to stay close, expect it to be a you know pretty decently paced game. But of course, it all starts at the top with Russell Westbrook up 10 9. Guys, an absolute triple double beast, missed one last time out by one assist. Um, time before triple double, time before triple double, time before triple double, time before triple double. So, four out of the last five games. Uh, the, the man's gone out there and put up a triple double. So you're going to pay up for him at 10-9, but for good reason. Uh, continue to play Russell Westbrook and feel real good about it. His counterpart in Bradley Beal comes in at 8-7. Pretty decent uh, discount down in Bradley Beal. And while he hasn't exactly been blowing the uh, world away with his recent production, we all know what Bradley Beal is capable of, and we all know the upside that he has. So... You know, there's any on any given matchup, he could go out there and put a 50 DraftKings points. So we'll have no issue with you playing my 8-7, and he's a great discounted playoff for Russell Westbrook, especially if you're going to be fading Russell Westbrook in your lineups. It's a great idea to be playing Bradley Beal instead. So you get the uh, the full effect of fading and playing a guy that's a little bit less owned. Jeremiah Grant down here at 6-5. It's a great matchup because these Washington Wizards not worried about them slowing him down defensively at all. When he's only priced at 6-5, that's way too cheap for him. We've been paying in the mid-7K range for him, and now he's on the 6-5. I don't know why. I like him a lot at that price tag. Uh, Rui Hachimura at 5'8", continues to play a lot of minutes. And then you got Sadiq Bey and Josh Jackson. Sadiq Bey at 5'2", getting a lot more minutes than Josh Jackson for the most part. I mean, when you're looking at his game logs, getting upper 30s to mid-30 minutes. So I'm going to really like him at 5'2", dig on this Washington squad. And then as far as Josh Jackson is concerned, at 5'1", I had mentioned Diallo and Joseph are questionable. If they are out, this is going to be the biggest beneficiary. He played 27 minutes last time out, typically only playing around like 20 minutes. So Josh Jackson becomes a much better play as well if those guys um, go ahead and sit in this one. Cleveland taking on Chicago. This game comes in right now with a 213 over under one and a half point spread in favor of the Chicago Bulls. Expect to be a pretty slow paced game, so not exactly the most fantasy friendly game to be targeting. Zach Levine is listed as out in this one, so expect there to be a bit of a usage bump for a guy like a Kobe White here at 5'2 on the Chicago side. And Thomas Sadoransky is also listed as questionable. Last time out, Kobe White going out there and putting up 45 DraftKings points. I'd look for similar production. Um, maybe not, you know, that high of a score, but uh, a lot of opportunity for him if there continues to be no Zach Levine, especially if there continues to be no Thomas Sadoransky. Um, so, yeah, you know, he'll get the start. He'll get a lot of more usage. And the same was going to apply for Nikola Vucevic up here at 9-8. Expect him to get a lot more usage as well. He put up 54 and 52 DraftKings points the last two times out, so I'm going to have a lot more interest in him. And then on the Cleveland side, it's pretty straightforward. I'm looking to play Colin Sexton, Jared Allen, Darius Garland, Larry Nish Jr., Kevin Love, all these guys that are kind of priced up in this range. You can't really play all of them, of course, in, your, in the same lineup. So if you're playing multiple lineups, you're going to have to pick which one and kind of spread them thin. Uh, but these are the guys that are really producing at a high rate on this team, and these are the guys that I'm wanting to target. I'm not really trying to get cute with anyone else. Um, the only guy I would say is Isaiah Hartenstein at 5'3". This guy's producing at a very high rate. But the problem is his minutes have really been cut back the last couple games. So it's kind of tough to go there. You know, you got Kevin Love back. Um, I'd be sticking to those guys like I talked about uh, at the top range here. So Golden State taking on Boston. This game right now comes in with a 227.5 over under. Five-point spread in favor of the Boston Celtics. we got Stephen Curry at 10-3. Guys have been putting up a lot of points recently, all the way up to 10-3 now. Um, we were paying 10-6 for him last time out, but, I mean, look at the, the games that Stephen Curry's been having. 54, 59, 69, 67, and 45, 49 DraftKings points. I mean, the guy's getting it done. He's playing mid-30 to upper 30 minutes, and in the game, that's expected to stay close in the game. They're going to really need his services to stay close. you got to like Stephen Curry in this one. Um, Robert Williams listed us out, and Evan Forney listed us out on the Boston side. That's definitely going to open up some minutes over there. You know, Tristan Thompson, Luke Cornett are guys that you could be really looking to on the, uh, the Boston side, so... 
Um, going to have a lot of interest in those guys. 4-5 for Tristan Thompson. That's going to be way too cheap with this new role with no um, Robert Williams. So I like him a lot. And then as mentioned, you know, you could always go to a Luke Cornett at 3K. If he's going to get some solid backup minutes, he's played 15 and 18 minutes the last two times out at only 3K. He can shoot the three ball. He can definitely get you there in a hurry on DraftKings if he gets hot. So I like him. Then you got Draymond Green, Andrew Wiggins on the Golden State side. If Kelly Oubre Jr. continues to be out, really going to like these guys, really going to be able to hone on them and know that they're getting all the usage. So I like that a lot. And then on the Boston side, you got Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown, Andrew Wiggins. I mean, I'm sorry, Kemba Walker and Marcus Smart. There's no Evan Fournier. There's no Robert Williams. Expect these guys to get some more usage as well. Kemba Walker at 6'9", at, uh, Marcus Smart at 6'3". You get a nice price discount on these guys. They can definitely get you there. They are price tags. And then you got Jalen Brown priced up at 8'3". I like him a lot more than Jason Tatum with the discount. I just kind of feel that way a lot of times when it comes to these two guys. Like Jason Tatum had that one game where he put up 75 against Minnesota, but that's one of the best fantasy environments you could ask for. I just like taking the discount to uh, Jalen Brown when I feel like they have the same upside. Why, why am I going to pay up for uh, Jason Tatum when I can play Jalen Brown? Now, of course, Jason Tatum is a power forward, so if your roster construction leads, construction leads you to being able to pay up for him, I mean, he's a great play. It's just if I'm play, picking between one of them based upon, you know, point per dollar and, and the upside they provide, I'm going to go with Jalen Brown. Memphis taking on Milwaukee. This game comes in with a 237 over under 8.5 point spread in favor of the Milwaukee Bucks. Expected to be a very fast-paced game, so definitely going to want to be having some interest in this one. There's no Dante DiVincenzo in this one. Um, that's going to open up some more minutes for sure as far as on the Milwaukee side. Really going to be liking Chris Middleton, Drew Holiday. Expect for them to really get some usage as well as Giannis Antetokounmpo, of course, up at 10-6. But Giannis is priced up at 10-6, and these guys, you get a nice discount. Now, of course, Giannis can get you there. I mean, the guy's an absolute beast. But Drew Holiday, Chris Middleton, and the mid-8K range, really liking those guys' uh, uh, price tag with the upside that they're going to be able to offer in this matchup. Um, and then as far as Jonas Vontunas and John Morant on the Memphis side, really going to like honing in on these guys because they're going to be the runback options. And then on the Memphis side, I do think that you can definitely be playing some Kyle Anderson and some Dylan Brooks as well. These core four are really the ones I'm always looking to on the Memphis side. Um, in a game that's going to stay close, they're going to really need them. And these guys just produce at a very good rate. You know, Kyle Anderson, a very good DK point per minute producer. Um, you've got Dylan Brooks, who I mentioned. He's a very good three-point shooter at 5-4. He's always priced in the 5K range. If you've been watching my content all year, you hear me say it every single time. I'm, I probably sound like a broken record at this point, but this is true. Like A guy that's priced in the mid-5K range is going to play starter minutes, can shoot the three ball, and can have like literally 50 drafting points every single time out. So I think it's a great tournament play every single time he takes the floor. And yeah, I mean, those are the guys I'm really looking to in this one. Um Bobby Portis at 6'6 on the Milwaukee side, priced up because there had been no Giannis for a while there. I'm not really trying to pay for him. I think uh, Brooke Lopez would be a better play down here at 5K. Uh, cheaper, can shoot the three ball, can get you there. He's put up 37 and 37 drafting points the last two times out. Hopefully that doesn't draw more ownership to him. It might, but um, I think he's a pretty decent option. Last game on the slate, we got San Antonio taking on Phoenix. This game right now comes in with a 228.5 over under with a 9-point spread in favor of the Phoenix Suns. Phoenix expected to win this one fairly easily, and it is a decent pace game, I would say, for um, you know what would have been probably not the greatest game in the years past. But um, these two teams, I, I mean, I like Chris Paul a lot at 8K. I think he's just you know priced pretty decently with room for upside um, with his on-ball handling. Then you got DeMar DeRozan and DeJounte Murray as run back options on the San Antonio side. Um, these guys are going to be the ones that you know offer the most upside alongside Derek White, Jakob Podol, Kelvin Johnson. Those are the guys I'm really looking to focus in on on the San Antonio side for sure. You know, Similar to um, that Cleveland squad that I discussed earlier, the, the, the minutes are really locked in. You know where the production is going. Like These are the guys I'm looking to play throughout my lineup. So I'm playing multiple lineups. Of course, you can't play them on the one lineup, but I mean, these are the guys you're really looking to. And then on the Phoenix side, you can play DeAndre Ayton at 6'8". If he gets some minutes, great fantasy point producer. He's been playing around 30 minutes, putting up like 40 DraftKings points a game. With the Acapodal's big size, maybe he can get up like to a little bit more, like maybe a little bit more towards the mid-30 minutes. And even if he doesn't, the guy's been really producing. So I like DeAndre Ayton. And yeah, that is my overall breakdown of this five-game slate. Before I let you guys go, I got to give you my lock of the night. Let's get into it. And my lock of the night tonight is going to be Kobe White for the Chicago Bulls squad. Without Zach Levine, I expect him to get a lot more on-ball handling duty. And there's a possibility that Thomas Sanaransky is going to miss this game as well. 
I just think that Kobe White's price tag is way too cheap for him in this particular matchup. Cleveland, not going to be the most fast-paced game in the world, but not exactly scaring me defensively. And at only 5-2, I think he can get you there very easily. Not priced up enough for his role yet. Putting up 45 DraftKings points last time, I'd expect him to really produce at a high rate again. And Kobe White is my lock of the night. So there we go, Kobe White, get him in your lineups. And that is all from me in this one. If you did enjoy the content, if you could please leave a like on this video, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell. That would be greatly appreciated. I wish you guys all the best of luck tonight, and we will see you in the next one.